So question seven is all about protein synthesis. And for the first part, we've been asked to define the proteome of a cell. And this is something that you should have learned that's directly on the specification. And the proteome of a cell is the full range of proteins that a cell is able to produce. And the second part then is testing your knowledge of the structure of mRNA and tRNA. But you've got to be careful here because it's asked you to give the structural differences between the two. And whenever there's a differences question, we have to make sure you're making direct comparisons. So where students usually miss the marks here is when they're not stating a clear difference. So there are lots of different things that you could have said for this. I'm going to draw out the structure of a tRNA molecule and of an mRNA molecule, and so we can pick out all of them. So the first difference that we can see is just in the shape of them. So we can see that our mRNA molecule is a straight shape and our tRNA molecule is a cloverleaf shape. And then following on from that, we can see because it's this folded shape that our tRNA molecule has got hydrogen bonds within it, whereas our mRNA molecule doesn't. Now, the function of a tRNA molecule is to carry specific amino acids in relation to its anticodon. So that has an amino acid binding site, whereas our mRNA molecule doesn't. And because mRNA molecule, that kind of carries a copy of a gene. So its length is going to be dependent on the length of that gene. So the mRNA molecule may vary in different lengths, whereas the tRNA molecule is always pretty much going to be a fixed length. Similarly, we can see that our mRNA molecule is actually always going to be longer than our tRNA molecule, even though I haven't shown that here very well. Um, that's because these genes are usually quite long. And on our DNA, we have three bases, which is called a triplet. Every three of these bases becomes a codon on mRNA. And then on mRNA, our codon is going to bind to a complementary anticodon on our tRNA. So that could be our final point of comparison, is our mRNA molecules have codons, whereas our tRNA molecules have anticodons. So I'm just going to show you the mark scheme so we can see the types of points that we could have put. I've already mentioned them, but just so you can see them there clearly. So you can see on the mark scheme that you always have to make a comment about mRNA and then compare that directly to tRNA. So we've got the one about the shape and the hydrogen bonds being in the same point because I guess the hydrogen bonds is a direct effect of it being a cloverleaf shape. We've got our amino acid binding sites, the fact that it's longer or more nucleotides, if you wanted to be more precise, different lengths and the codons versus the anticodon. So finally then, we've got a question about the actual process of protein synthesis. And in particular, it's asking us how translation works. And we've got to start from the mRNA that's in the cytoplasm. So you only want to be focusing on this. I've even told us not to include descriptions of any other processes. So we don't want to be talking about transcription or splicing. We're just going to talk about from when we've got that mRNA and how we get that to the protein. So I'm going to draw this out for you and talk you through it so you understand the process and where you're going to get the marks from this. So I'm going to start off by just drawing a blob as our ribosome. And that ribosome is going to attach to our mRNA molecule. And our mRNA molecule has got a start codon. Now, you don't need to know the specific basis that is a start codon. I'm just drawing it there so you can see it. And there will also be space for another codon. Let's just say it's a TT. So in our ribosome, we've got space for two codons, and therefore two tRNA molecules are going to come and attach to those. The first one being at the start codon. And I've just realised what I've done here is I actually wrote T's instead of that should have been U if anyone spotted that mistake already. So remember, a difference between DNA and RNA is the fact that we've got uracil instead of thymine. So our anticodons are going to be complementary to that. And they're going to form some hydrogen bonds. So now that our two amino acids are next to each other, we're going to be able to have a condensation reaction, which is going to form a peptide bond between those. 
and in the specification it wants you to understand the role of ATP so we're going to also say that ATP provides energy for this condensation reaction to happen. So if we were writing this out as our answer, you'd want to make sure your answer is in bullet points and try and keep each bullet point to what you think is going to get a point on the mark scheme. Try and make sure you're including keywords in each of those bullet points because remember the mark scheme quite often underlines the keywords and when a keyword is underlined in the mark scheme, that means even if you've got roughly the right answer, you have to have that specific keyword in order to get the mark. So our ribosome is going to attach to our mRNA and it's going to find a start codon which our first tRNA is going to bind to and our tRNA is going to carry a specific amino acid. The amino acid that it carries is going to be dependent on whatever anticodon it's got. That anticodon is going to bind to our codon and form hydrogen bonds. And therefore, because the ribosome can fit two tRNAs, we get two amino acids being joined together by a condensation reaction forming a peptide bond. And the ribosome moves along and the process continues until we reach a stop codon. And I should add, like I said, we also want to include in there that ATP is used to provide the energy for this peptide bond. So if we have a look at our mark scheme, can see how the marks were allocated. So we're getting a mark for being able to say that the mRNA associates with or attaches to the ribosome um, and particular at the start codon. Then our tRNA carries a specific amino acid. The anticodon binds to the codon or is complementary to the codon and that basically this carries on and the idea that it can fit two codons. And we could have got the final mark for talking about specific details like peptide bonds and condensation reactions or another specific detail about the ATP. So this was actually quite a nice question to do with protein synthesis. Quite often, the questions about protein synthesis are asking for the role of something. And that's how it's worded on the specification. You need to know about the details of translation, but in particular, you need to know the role of a ribosome or the role of ATP or whatever. So bear that in mind in your revision. Just make sure that you're able to answer those types of questions too.